Alright guys, we have made it to the first midweek block of games we've got in this championship season. Some pretty tasty ones coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll also be reflecting on the weekend's action in today's video as well. So any thoughts on that, get it in the comments down below. And also do drop your score predictions for the midweek matches we've got coming up in the championship as well. A lot can change in a three game week when the turnaround of matches is so quick. It's a great chance for teams to start to build some momentum. Do drop a like if you're going to enjoy, but Without any further ado, let's get into these games. So starting out at Turf Moor for Burnley up against Plymouth. And I've really got to tip my hat to Plymouth because it was a cracking result over the weekend and one that I didn't see coming. Beating Luton by three goals to one. I thought that Rooney utilised his subs really well in that match. And it was a pretty convincing performance in the end, especially at home this season. It does feel like Plymouth could bring it to quite a few of their opponents. It's whether or not they can bring that sort of performance and results into some of their away matches this season, which could be the real test for them. Now, to be fair to Plymouth, I thought they were decent value for money on the road last time against West Brom. It was a narrow defeat, but on another day, maybe could have snatched a point from that game. In their opening three matches away from home, they have only scored once, and I think Burnley will probably keep this game pretty tight. have to be honest, I was pretty underwhelmed by Burnley over the weekend. A goal of straw against Oxford. Listen, going to Oxford was never going to be easy. They've been a really good side at home so far this season, but Burnley weren't really able to craft out that many clear clear-cut chances. A lot of the shots they had in that game seemed to be pop shots from outside the box and things like that. And what's interesting about these two sides is from a creative point of view, there's not actually been that much to separate them so far this season. In Burnley's opening seven matches, they've created an XG of 6.4. Plymouth are only slightly worse off than that, having created an XG of 6.0 in their opening seven matches. So from that angle, there probably won't be that much in this game. I think Plymouth would definitely take a point from it. I've just got a feeling that Burnley may be edged this one after being disappointed to have dropped two points uh, last time against Oxford. Score prediction there. I'm going to go 1-0 Burnley, but it could be close, I reckon. Next then to Cardiff up against Millwall. It was a disastrous result for Cardiff over the weekend. They need to get their managerial situation sorted as soon as possible because seven games in, they are in a really perilous position. They've only got one point on the board right now. They've conceded by far the most goals in the championship. That really compounded this weekend as Hull put four goals past them. Currently, they're conceding 2.4 goals per game. And going up against a Millwall side, who, generally speaking, have been pretty good at hitting the back of the net so far, far this season. I think Neil Harris's men do come into this game as the favourites. From a Millwall perspective, good performance I thought over the weekend. Well beaten uh, my team Preston North End in the end. The likes of SA, Honeyman, Langstaff especially, I all thought were really good in the final third. Uh, one to point out for Millwall, they will be without Amaku uh, for this game after he was shown a red card late on in that game against Preston, but I don't think that'll be too much of a miss for them in this particular fixture. Cardiff will spring a result out of nowhere at some point of this season. I'm just not sure it happens here. Score prediction for me... I'm going to go 2-1 Millwall, which would be a really damning result for Cardiff there. Next up, we go to Coventry up against Blackburn Rovers. Blackburn continuing their excellent start to the season. Another three points for them over the weekend, beating QPR. That's now two games in a row where Blackburn have played the second half against 10 men. Obviously, Jonathan Varane's red card really aiding Blackburn in their pursuit of all three points in that game over the weekend. But cracking result nonetheless. They're still unbeaten seven games into this season, albeit they're still looking for their first win on the road. All three of their away matches so far have ended level. I wouldn't be totally surprised if this game follows along on a similar sort of path. Listen, it's been well documented. Coventry have started this season really poorly. When you're on a bad run of momentum, you don't want to be heading to Ellen Road as a game to sort of turn around your fortunes. I think we all saw Coventry losing over the weekend. In the end, they were well beaten 3-0 by Leeds United. They need to pull their finger out eventually. Does that happen in this fixture, though? I'm not so sure. Blackburn have proven themselves to be really tough to play against. Defensively, they've been a lot better than they were were last season. Score prediction in this one. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to go level. 1-1 draw I'm saying between those two, which doesn't do too much for Coventry right now. 
Next then to Kenilworth Road for Luton up against Oxford. Good solid result, I thought, over the weekend for Oxford. A goal of straw against Burnley. Quite resolute and rigid in their defensive performance for that one. Limited Burnley, like we were saying before, to quite a few pop shots and things like that. And I think they can really take that sort of performance into some of their away matches this season. Certainly the outer possession work and things like that, I think, will serve them well in a game like this where Luton probably will find themselves in quite a few threatening areas areas. Having said that, quite disappointed with Luton uh, and their efforts over the weekend. It felt like they were starting to build a little bit of momentum, but very much came back down to reality, losing that 1-3-1 against Plymouth on Friday night. Interesting to see if Rob Edwards does make a few changes to the personnel for this one, not just with it being a quick turnaround um, into a midweek match, but with some of Luton's Probably bigger performers, not really turning up consistently so far this season. I think he's got a few headaches when it comes to team selection right now. Oxford yet to pick up a point on the road this season, but all their defeats have been by a one-goal margin. I think this game will be pretty tight, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't be totally shocked if Oxford walk away with something here. But I've just got a feeling that Luton maybe do get a reaction from Friday night. Score prediction there... I'm going to go 2-1 Luton, but I'm not overly confident in that prediction with the way they're sort of playing. Next up, we're up to Carroll Road for Norwich up against Leeds United. This one should be a tasty affair, especially for the neutrals. It's a repeat of last season's championship playoff semi-final, obviously. Over both legs, Leeds were the quite comfortable victors of that tie in the end. But Norwich, I think, will fancy themselves at least to get a point from this one. They're unbeaten at Carroll Road so far this season. Cracking result for them over the weekend. Borgia signs with an absolutely fantastic performance he scored a hat-trick, which was ultimately the, the difference in that 3-2 game against Derby. I do think we've seen a few examples where that Norwich back line can be got at, especially if you're a side like Leeds United with as much quality as they have in the final third. I do think there are goals to be had here, but Norwich definitely have a response to that. Now, sometimes when you do get two good attacking sides going up against each other, that can almost cancel each other out and it ends up being a bit of a cautious affair. I hope we don't get that in this game because if not, I could see a couple of goals being scored at either end of the pitch in this one. Leeds still unbeaten on the road, Norwich still unbeaten at home. I'm talking myself into a draw in this one, I think. Score prediction there, going to go for a 2 2 -er between those two. After that, we go to QPR up against Hull City. Does feel like QPR are in need of results sooner rather than later. It's only one win now from their opening seven matches. Their second defeat of the season season over the weekend against Blackburn Rovers obviously that red card for Jonathan Varane on the stroke of half time ultimately being a big momentum swinger in that match this one against Hull won't be easy though Hull recently leapfrog QPR in the league table having put together back-to-back -to -back wins in the championship it was a bit of a dodgy start to the season for the Tigers but they've now scored seven goals in their last two matches for context QPR have only scored eight goals all season so definitely feels like Hull have got more fight power about them right now really good result and performance over the weekend to come from a goal down against Cardiff to beat them 4-1 and in a really convincing fashion in the end I think that'll do quite a bit to start to breed some confidence and this sort of style of play that Hull fans were expecting coming into this season the sort of goal mouth action that they were craving or at least the owner was we're starting to see a few more glimpses of that right now that this is the sort of match which I always find really difficult to call because pound for pound I don't think there's that much between these two squads especially with QPR being at home and how they usually make those sorts of matches tough for the opposition but the way Hull have gone about their last couple of matches it's probably hard to see past them right now score prediction there I'm going to go 2 1 Hull. Why not back them for three consecutive wins, which would be a cracking run for them? After that, we're off to the Stadium of Light for Sunderland up against Derby County. Both sides looking to bounce back from defeats over the weekend. Sunderland losing that 1 2 1 against Watford, giving away that late penalty, cost them a point in that game in the end. And Derby looking to react from losing against Norwich. There was an air of misfortune around that Norwich game from a Derby perspective, especially with the way in which the first goal came about, the ball clearly out of play uh, before Sargent pulled it back but nevertheless I think Derby will give Sunderland a decent run for their money in this one I think most of their matches have been pretty tight so far this season albeit Sunderland have been pretty convincing in 
all of their home matches. They've won all three of the games they played at the Stadium of Light so far this season without conceding a goal in any of them. Derby are always capable of scoring on the break or a set piece especially. I just think Sunderland are the team to bounce back in midweek. Score prediction in that one. I'm going to go 2-0 to the Black Cats. We've got a tasty matchup coming up next at the Hawthorns as West Brom take on Middlesbrough. Quite a few people probably fancying both of these sides to finish in the top six come the end of the season. So it'll be interesting to gauge the level of where they're both at currently. West Brom losing their first game of the season over the weekend. Uh, quite disappointed, I suppose they'll be, to have been two goals down against Wednesday, to have then brought it back to 2-2, only to go on and lose the game late on. But generally speaking, under Carlos Corbron, they have had really good bounce back ability, especially when playing at the Hawthorns. Middlesbrough won't make it easy though, and they definitely are a squad and team capable of going to the Hawthorns and taking the game to West Brom. It was a good win for Michael Carrick's men uh, over the weekend against Stoke. That goal from Hayden Hackney in particular, lovely strike from him. There's still a question about the consistency maybe of this Middlesbrough squad they're yet to string together back-to-back -back wins in this championship season and if they can go to West Brom and put in a real statement performance here I think a lot of people will start to take them seriously I see goals being scored at both ends of the pitch for this one I've just got a feeling that West Brom may be bounced back I always find it tough to bet against them in their home fixtures especially a draw wouldn't surprise me here. I just think the Baggies may sneak this one, maybe with a late goal being scored. 2-1 West Brom, I'm saying in that game, but like I say, Middlesbrough more than capable of going there and getting something. After that, we go to Deepdale for Preston North End up against Watford. North End could really do with a result in this game, coming off the back of a disappointing showing away at Millwall with a game against Burnley to look forward to on the horizon as well. This feels like a really crucial match. Now, I have to be honest, I was looking into some of the underlying stats after that game against Millwall, and from a Preston perspective, they are pretty worrying right now after seven matches have been played no team has accumulated a lower xg in the championship than preston have just 4.3 xg preston have accumulated in those seven matches and in that time watford have accumulated over double that number so certainly in terms of firepower getting into good positions Watford definitely have the edge over Preston right now even thinking back to the meeting of these two sides at Deepdale last season Watford absolutely wiped the floor with us that day in this same fixture last season Watford beat us 5-1 at Deepdale and just absolutely ran right at Deepdale it was a really good result for them over the weekend as well against Sunderland felt like maybe they'd lost a little bit of momentum in recent weeks but they managed to recapture that with that result against Sunderland. I do think under Heckenbottom at Deepdale we've looked a little bit more solid than we have done on the road and so from that perspective I reckon we could grind out a draw in this one but that doesn't really do us many favours right now. We need to get that second win on the board as soon as possible. Does it come in this match though? I'm not so sure. Score prediction there. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw, but I do have a bad feeling in the back of my mind that Watford could get a couple goals. Next up, we go to Bramall Lane for Sheffield United up against Swansea. Both teams coming off the back of draws over the weekend. Sheffield United with that goalless one away at Portsmouth and Swansea drawing one apiece with Bristol City. Thought Swansea looked decent in that first half against Bristol City, but it definitely was a game of two halves where the second half they fell back into their shell a little bit, didn't have much jump about them in the final third, and the point was probably the right result um, on reflection of the full 90 minutes. Going up against the Sheffield United side, who definitely haven't been as free scoring as maybe I thought they might have been um, up until this point of the season. You know, currently they're only averaging 1.3 goals per game. I think that lack of clinical edge was probably on show um, over the weekend against Portsmouth. But what has been to their real advantage so far this season is how sturdy they've actually been at the back. Cooper with another fantastic performance for the Blades um, in between the sticks over the weekend. In their first seven matches, they've only conceded three goals. Don't tend to give away that many many big chances to the opposition and even when they do Cooper's usually on hand to get them out of jail so this one feels fairly tight 
if I'm being honest with you. Out Bramall Lane with the home crowd roaring them on. I think Sheffield United maybe just get over the line, but Swansea could definitely nick a goal and make things difficult. Score prediction there, I'm going to go 1-0 Sheffield United, but feels like a low margin of victory maybe. Coming up next, we're going to Stoke up against Portsmouth. This feels like a really big game in probably both teams' seasons. Now, from a Portsmouth perspective, the fixture list finally switches from probably this game week onwards, obviously. It's been very documented. They've had a really tough start to the season with the quality of sides they face so far, but from a Portsmouth perspective, six of their next eight matches are all against sides who are currently in the bottom half of the championship, so definitely a good chance to get that first win on the board and start to build some momentum. With everything being said, I thought it was a good result on the surface of things um, against Sheffield United over the weekend, another point on the board for John Moussinho's man. And everything taken into consideration, this feels like a decent time to be playing Stoke City right now, obviously. Um, with Pelach losing his first two matches in charge of Stoke, you don't want to start your tenure losing three on the bounce, do you? Especially when it was a bit of an unpopular opinion in the first place, especially to get rid of Schumacher. Now, in terms of the underlying numbers between these two sides so far this season, there's not been a great deal between them. It's felt like Portsmouth have had a bit more firepower about them, maybe, but in terms of chance creation, and the amount of chances they face. Both sides have been fairly similar. From a Stoke perspective, we're still waiting for some of their forwards really to click into gear. Tom Cannon hasn't exactly got off to an ideal start at his new club, has he? Oh, this is a really tough game to call. I think I'm going to sit on the fence for it and go for a 1-1 draw. Both teams could really do with a win there, but... I'm finding them hard to split right now. And then to round off this midweek batch of games we've got coming up, we're going to Ashton Gate for Bristol City up against Sheffield Wednesday. Two sides who picked up, I'd say, probably positive results over the weekend. Sheffield Wednesday with that cracking result against West Brom. Felt like maybe they were on the verge of throwing things away when they went two goals up to get it back down to 2-2. But coming up with a late winner, that could do them the world of good in terms of building a little bit of momentum. And it did feel like from recent recent performances they had been building in the right direction that game against QPR they were the better side against Luton could have easily snatched a point on the road and then they got their justice in the end with that three points against West Brom this game won't be easy though Bristol City got a solid point last time on the road against Swansea probably looked like the more likely side to win that game based on the second half as well it was Jason Knight with a cracking header uh, to get them back into that game also worth noting Bristol City are unbeaten at Ashton Gate so far this season season and Sheffield Wednesday have had their real struggles on the road up until this point. They've only scored one goal in their three away matches so far this season. If they can harness that performance from Hillsborough over the weekend though, Bristol City are definitely a side who you can get at from a defensive point of view. With all that being said, oh, it's a tough one to call. It depends whoever turns up on the night. I do find it tough to back against Bristol City at Ashton Gate. Score prediction, I reckon Bristol City could just scrape that. I'm going to go 2-1 Bristol City, but on showing of Sheffield Wednesday's performance over the weekend, they've definitely got some goals in them. Well, guys, there you have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to get all your thoughts in the comments down below as well. But other than that, I'll catch you all in the next one.